I am natural gas. They were in the salt business, digging a brine well, which was a common thing to do along the banks of the Kanawha River in 1815. With their crude spring pole rig, they were going down a steady three feet per day. When, on this day, they suddenly heard from me. When I put on a show like this, is it any wonder that the earliest Americans called me a wild spirit? And during the next decade, my unexpected appearances from brine wells throughout Ohio, Pennsylvania, and West Virginia became so frequent that these pioneers among my people conquered their fears and invented ways to cope with my rambunctious spirit. Soon they had discovered enough about my talents to deliberately drill wells in search of me. Crudely but effectively, they had learned to control me after a fashion transport me through hollow logs over short distances and use me as a form of illumination. And then, one day in 1840, another of my people put me to work for the first time in American industry. An ingenious salt maker, bless his heart, in Centerville, Pennsylvania, got the idea that unlike the logs he'd been using for the fire under his vats, I didn't have to be cut, split, stacked, or carried. And what's more, I was there 24 hours a day to boil down the brine in his salt kettles. Now that the barrier had been broken, my people kept finding newer and better uses for me. In their industries, on the streets of their towns and cities, and in their parlors, at first for light and then in the kitchen for cooking, as well as smudge-free heat in their homes. And if you'll pardon a small boast, by the year 1900, I had become a household word, so versatile and popular that an entire era is still named after me. As more people wanted me, they now searched for and found me in great quantities throughout Ohio, Pennsylvania, and West Virginia here in America's original natural gas land. And here the complicated techniques and skills required to bring me from thousands of feet below the earth were developed and perfected. 